We have talked about a lot of air accidents on this channel. Occasionally, there comes across an incident in aviation, which is much less to do with the airplane and more to do with the airport and where the accident occurred. In 1990, a small Norwegian plane crashed less than two minutes after takeoff from a small regional airport killing all on board. The incident was not isolated, as the airport had seen another incident which nearly resulted in a crash the previous year. The airport in question was considered to be an extremely challenging airport to pilots and thus was closed in 1990 following this accident. Since the crash of Vidaro Flight 839, commercial flights have ceased from this airport. So what happened? Why was this airport so dangerous for lack of a better term? And how did it affect the plane? Sometimes, airports need to be in inconvenient places, and sometimes, these airports can be challenging to pilots and be difficult to operate at. Airports such as this justify their existence as they can serve as a vital lifeline to remote communities. One good example being Lukla Airport in Nepal. The airport of discussion today, however, is in Norway. The island of Vare sits at the end of a long chain of islands off the coast of mainland Norway called the Lofoten Archipelago. The Lofoten Islands are famous for their incredibly steep and striking mountain ranges. Vare sits at the end of this chain of islands, along with the nearby island of Rust. Less than 1,000 people live on Vare. Before 1990, the main route for people traveling on and off of the island was to go through the local airport located on the north side of the island. The sole airline which served the airport was the Norwegian regional air carrier Vidaro. Vidaro operates a network of regional flights across Norway and serves many of the remote communities in the north of the country. Following the accident of Flight 839, the airline ceased operations effectively closing the airport to commercial traffic, though the airport did remain in some operation for private use throughout the years until its eventual closure. Why did Vidaro pull out of the airport? Why did the airport close? And why is the airport at Vare so challenging to pilots? I say is because the airport is actually still there to this day. The runway, although closed, apron and terminal all still remain on the island, but the terminal had been repurposed over the years. Let's take a closer look at the airport itself. Vade Airport was opened in 1986. This was after a long planning process by the local government. Proposals for an airport here date back to the 1960s, and even before that, the island was served by seaplanes. The airport is very small, with a single runway measuring around 800 meters. It has a small apron and a small terminal, and looks like a lot of many other airports in this part of Norway. Unlike other quote-unquote extreme and challenging airports, there is nothing too exceptional here with the airport itself. There is no significant runway gradient, no challenging approach flight paths, and the runway is of sufficient length for the aircraft that Vidaro operated at the airport, the Twin Otter. What makes this airport challenging is the unique geological structure which sits in close proximity to the runway. It would be best to see a view of the airport facing south. A 500 meter, 1600 feet tall mountain with a near vertical face is situated around half a kilometer from the runway which runs parallel to it. It really is quite striking. The rocky nature of the island meant that this relatively flat section of the northwest coast of the island was just about the only place to put an airport. As you could imagine, this created some interesting meteorological challenges for pilots. Before operating at the airport, Vidaro conducted test flights to see if regular aircraft operations were actually feasible. The airport only saw few operations by Vidaro, of which a significant number of flights were cancelled due to unfavorable wind conditions. In fact, the airport became notorious and achieved the accolade of being the airport in Norway with the most flight cancellations. Vade Airport would become the airport in Europe with the shortest life with an operating time of just four years serving commercial traffic. In 1990, Vidaro operated a number of Canadian-built de Havilland DHC Twin Otters. The plane itself has been incredibly successful 
and has been in production since 1965. The small twin propeller plane seats just 20 passengers, but has been the ideal plane for many operators who need to fly into tough to reach places. It falls under the category of aircraft called stall aircraft, which stands for short takeoff and landing. The plane in the aviation world is simply referred to as the Twin Otter or Twatter. The Norwegian Twin Otter registered as Lima November Bravo November Sierra would make its final flights on April 12, 1990. The plane started its day in Bude. In the afternoon of that day, it would make a trip to the island of Rust, making a short hop to Vare before heading back to Bude. The first two legs of the trip were performed without problems. The accident occurred on this final leg. Piloting the small plane that day was 40-year-old Captain Ida Nils Persson, along with his co-pilot, 31-year-old Arndt Vida Gronaflatte. During the flight to Rost, the pilots requested weather information for Vare. The weather on this occasion was cloudy. Visibility was 3 kilometers. Cold, with the outside air temperature being around 5 degrees Celsius. Rain was forecast for later and the winds were variable with varying speeds. Though it was a miserable day and still fine for a twin otter, the investigation would later state that the flight to Vare should never have happened in the first place. They left Rost on the second leg at 2.14 p.m. During the short flight, the pilots received more up-to-date weather. Winds again were variable and it had started to rain. In their approach to Vare, the pilots discussed the missed approach procedures and expressed concerns about the weather. Despite the unfavorable weather, Flight 839 landed in Vare at 2.30. According to the accident report, the pilots while taxiing to the stand had a conversation about the winds in the area, commenting that they had difficulty landing the plane. Still, the plane commenced its short turnaround, where some passengers disembarked and a further two boarded. On flight 839 heading to Buda, there were just three passengers, plus the pilots for a total of five on board. While the plane was parked, there was a recorded wind speed of 57 knots. For reference, that is an over 100 km per hour wind. After a quick refueling and exchange with air traffic control, the plane was ready to head back out. Flight 839 was cleared to use runway 25 for takeoff. Widerow's standard departure out of Vare meant that the pilots needed to fly a heading of 280 immediately after departure. This was to quickly get away from the potential violent wind conditions created by the nearby mountain. On this occasion, the captain decided to go against this and opted for a turn to heading 320. Widerow had imposed restrictions on its own operations to the airport and deemed that if winds were in excess of 20 knots from an easterly direction through south to 240 degrees, aircraft could not take off or land. The Twin Otter also has a wind limit which states that the plane cannot take off if winds are higher than 50 knots. As wind had been measured to be 57 knots while the plane was parked at Vare, Flight 839 beginning its departure was in violation of this rule. A piece of information from the ATC which was also not passed on to the flight crew was that winds were coming from an easterly direction at winds of upwards of 50 knots also. As the plane was lining up on the runway, weather was updated again and the info that the pilots received stated that winds were gusting up to 34 knots in the area. At 2.42pm, the plane began its takeoff. Once leaving the ground, the wind direction immediately changed. Eyewitnesses on the ground saw the plane climb with nothing too out of the ordinary as it disappeared into the clouds. Flight 839 banked to the right for a northwesterly heading. Going against the standard procedures, the captain does not raise the flaps which were set to 10 degrees, choosing to keep them out for longer. The Twin Otter quickly entered a region of air of extreme turbulence and wind shear. The strong variation and changes of wind over a short period of time had caused cracks to form in the plane's structure around the tail section of the aircraft. No structural or mechanical problems have been noted with the aircraft in its logbook in the previous flights nor from other pilots. 55 seconds after leaving the runway in Vare, the cracks mounted to structural failure and the pilots lost all control of their plane. 8 seconds later, the Twin Otter crashed into the Norwegian Sea, some 6.5 kilometers out in the water. Two hours after the plane went missing, small pieces of wreckage were spotted on the water by rescue teams. Initial efforts had to be delayed due to adverse weather in the region as some boats and helicopters turned back. Once the efforts resumed, 
It took five days for the main wreckage to be found, and it was clear that there were no survivors. The bodies of all three passengers and the co-pilot were recovered. The body of the captain, however, was never found. The Air Accident Investigation Board of Norway criticised the flight crew's actions that day in their accident report, saying that the crew should not have landed in Vare in the first place given the winds that were reported. They believed that they had departed Vare because the winds that were reported were from the west. Other pilots had come forward stating that this caused less disruption and the pilots in this incident may have ignored the limits. This aspect of the accident filed it under pilot error, but the other primary causal factor to the crash was because of the structural failure of the airframe induced by excessively strong winds and turbulence. The Norwegian investigators were also critical of the Norwegian aviation governing body for allowing the airport at Vade to be built in the first place, as it was, quote, clearly unsuitable for regular flights. There was also a second investigation into the incident, as some in the industry believed that the structural failure may have been induced by metal fatigue. This investigation, however, came to the same conclusions as the first. After the crash of Flight 839, Vitero pulled out of Vare and the airport immediately closed to public flights. In 1992, the airport was permanently closed for good. A new helipad was constructed in Vare, which opened in 1997. This is now the primary air corridor on and off of the island, with helicopter flights to Buda. There has never been another air accident on the island since. But what became of the airport? As mentioned earlier in the video, all the markers of an airport are still there to this day. The terminal, according to an NRK television program, was converted into a chocolate factory. This, however, closed in 2015 following a fire. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for watching, I greatly appreciate it. If you like the content, be sure to subscribe as there will be another video this weekend. I know this video has not been as long as other recent videos, but I must certainly take time to thank everyone for the amazing reception on the last few videos, which really have become the fastest growing videos I have ever made. So a big thanks is in order for everyone who has subscribed, watched, and engaged with the Disaster Breakdown content. Thank you all so much. It's time to once again thank my patrons over on Patreon for their amazing support. Patrons get access to all new content 48 hours before it goes out publicly on YouTube. They also get their name featured or read out at the end of the videos, so if you're interested and want to support the channel further, consider joining from £3 per month today and the link to that will be in the pinned comment below. So a thank you to my £5 tier patrons, Avery Teoda, Aaron Wilson, Hector Palmatellas, Ken Zachman, Kenneth Morens, Christy, Leon San Jennings, Marie Innes, MG, Mom Left Me at Best Buy, Pacman 7, Panic Chicken, Pedro Cruz, Rebecca Rivers, Rez, Rio Whitley, Sevilla Melody, Sleepy, So FP, and Sue 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 Shoes. Finally said that right. A massive thanks to my generous £10 tier patrons for the amazing support Ada Montgomery, Anne Sid, Daniel Hendricks, Derek Bean, James Bluke, Karma, Mike Milton, Side Effect, Roger Mayer, Steve Cottrell, and Where Are My Cheetos? That is it for me today, but there will be another video this Saturday. Stay tuned and I will see you then. Goodbye!